Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Turn my bike up a little bit on my ears here, Jay. We've got a beautiful Thursday here. The episode 119. And you know who it's brought to you by. That's Phillips Law. Official call line for any legal advice free of charge for our audience, family, and friends. And the number is 602 388 1669 for any legal advice you may need. And you know how expensive that can get. They got a hundred, wait, one billion dollars plus one for their clients. That's a lot of bread. Trusted and recommended since 1993, over 1,800 plus. Google reviews, official partners, the Arizona Cardinals and ASU Sun Devils. You need Phillips. So it's that time again for another show. Let's get that posture cranked up. <sighs> Grab yourself a refreshment of your choice. And uh, let's get serious here. Um, what do we got first here in the MMA news? We got a lot to talk about. It says, uh, Mazdal says, unretired. Damn. I wonder what they're what they're dealing with here. They're dealing with some negotiations. I want to know. I wonder if the UFC's panicked about their uh their UFC 300 main event or if they're just still dialing in the the contract. But we got Nate Diaz, free agent. We got Jorge Masvidal coming out of retirement. And Connor says he's out of the loop for UFC 300, which is crazy cuz June he says end of June. So how many months is that February? January, February, March, April, May. That's another six months when he was complaining about getting a fight so quick. Um, so it's still up in shambles, the UFC 300 main event. I saw on a website it said Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad. Um, it's like, you for UFC 300? Come on. But I feel like Dana, Dana's the man. You know he is. He's going to come out with something that's just going to blow our minds. And we're going to be like, what? Hell Yeah. Be sweet if it was like someone like Mazadal versus Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz is getting up there a little bit though. Um, that would be a cool, a cool battle. Mazadal, Nate Diaz. I'm like, I don't really want to see that again. I know Warlike, my uh, Xbox buddy, tried to say Mazadal versus Nate Diaz was close. Um, but those Canadians up there, I mean, I don't even know what the hell they're doing. Eating too much poutine, I guess. Because that fight wasn't close. Mazadal beat the tar out of Nate. So I don't know if that's going to be the one, especially I don't know if the UFC is going to drop that much bread because Mazadal is going to be expensive. Nate Diaz is going to be expensive. But come on, baby, it's UFC 300. Be remembered forever. Um, Connor said he's coming back 185. 185, if that's the truth, it's like, I remember when I was on uh, the Fight Master, I was talking to Greg Jackson and he was, friends with gsp's coach and they were talking about how long it takes new muscle to get actually in good shape when you put on a lot of size a lot of muscle it takes a long time for that muscle to get in shape and not just get in shape like okay it's in shape get in shape to scramble get in shape to fucking throw punches because i'm sure connor's fight's going to come back and it's going to be uh no caller id you kidding me i'm gonna answer that here let's see here hello print caller but um yeah 185 pounds michael chandler there's a there's a good chance he's gonna throw caution to the wind and just start fucking throwing haymakers if he does that his his fists are by his armpits he throws his punches so hard that he overextends a lot and he he, he uh, falls into opposite stance. He squares up his feet. And someone like Connor, who can float back in a good balanced stance, stay in southpaw stance, and whip some punches. You saw it with Eddie Alvarez. And Eddie Alvarez is probably, boxing wise, a better boxer than Michael Chandler. But if Michael Chandler's smart and he wants to go down in the history books for one of the ones who beat Conor McGregor, Michael will go out there throw a couple punches, make it maybe seem like he's going to punch and force Connor to do a couple scrambles into a couple wrestling scrambles because they're scrambling in jiu-jitsu, they're scrambling wrestling. Um, but scrambling in MMA will zap your energy faster than anything. If you've been in a street fight, if you've been in a, a real fight before, if you've even been hard sparring matches and you're trying to, someone shoots on you and you're really trying to stop them and maybe they take you down and now you're really trying to explode and get up and, and turn this thing into a scramble and get to your feet. 
It's the most exhausting thing probably in the world. I'm trying to think of something that's probably more exhausting and physically tiring than a, a, a scramble, a wrestling scramble in MMA. I'm trying to think of something. Can you think of something, Jay? That's more tiring and exhausting in, in, in like, say it's a 10-second scramble. 10-second scramble is a long scramble. But if it's a 10-second scramble, when you hit the feet, it's going to be like, holy fuck. And if Conor McGregor has all this new weight, you could pop a, squ a squat by Jay um, Art. If Conor McGregor hits that and he's just freshly, he's not used to scrambling at 185 pounds, yeah. there's a good chance he's going to get puckered out. And I think that would be a good, a good fucking plan for Michael Chandler. If I was Michael Chandler's coach, I'd sit down with him. I'd say, hey. Yes, it'll be sweet. The fans want to see you just throw fucking throw haymakers. and, But it's like, he's a sniper. Let's take his ass down. Let's make him work. Let's gas his arms out. Let's fatigue his lungs. Let's get him fucking puckered out in the first couple minutes of that fight. Just take some pop away from his punches. Uh, easier said than done. But that'll be interesting. I hope that fight happens. I, it, feels, it feels like when Connor announced that, that he was just kind of trying to fool us a little bit. Trying to have a little jokey, a little jokey joke. Um, yeah, other than that, let me see here. MMA news. The MMA, our 11th annual awards coach, Eric Nixick, says his life got changed with the paycheck from Tyson, or from Francis after that Tyson free fight. I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. I'm sure it was fucking probably seven figs that he got paid. Probably more than any MMA coach will damn near ever make. So good for him. He deserves it. That's awesome. Um, Ian Machado fires back at Sean Strickland, reveals hit list for 2024, including Colby Covington. Um, uh, he says, how the tables have turned, Ian Gary said. You dish it out in the lowest, most vile manner, but you can't take a punch or a pinch. You attacked my wife incessantly, obsessively calling her a, a pedophile. It's clear to see your childhood trauma is showing. You claimed you were giving me advice before. Well, now it's my turn to return the favor. You need to shut your mouth and focus on the mirror because you have enough serious issues. I mean, kind of Sean Strickland. I mean, I like Sean Strickland. All the interactions I've had with him, I like him. I, he, I just, he, he seems like a, a good guy, crazy motherfucker, obviously, but I like him. But it's like he does talk about other people's wives. And then when someone brings up him and his trauma, it kind of it kind of hit a... Hit a nerve there. Sean Strickland says, there's some things that are off limits. You don't really talk about a man's wife. Well, he kind of, th he's definitely done that. You don't talk about a man's kids and you don't talk about a kid being abused. These things are all off limits. Once he crossed that, I tried to fucking ignore it. I was boiling. Whenever Dreykus goes on there and he jokes about that shit, dude, you have no idea. I'll fucking kill you. You have no idea. I think the issue is too, when you're a kid and you're made to be a victim your whole life, as an adult, you're like, never again, I'll fucking kill you. So, yeah, that definitely struck a couple uh, fingers there on Strickland. What else we got? Conor McGregor opens as a favorite in the Michael Chandler matchup. Damn, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. I might have to throw a little bread on Michael, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously, connor has got that left hand, but damn, this layoff... It's not like Michael Chandler's a fucking slouch. He's an animal. He really is. Um, so UFC 300 fight card rumor tracker. Dustin Poirier rules out massive return. I mean, I mean, Dustin's one of those guys that was making pay-per-view points without being the champion. So you bring that into negotiations, it's like... Easier said than done, but it's like, come on, make UFC 300 just fucking crazy. But what are the fights you can make? Who knows? Comzot came out with this uh, picture of him... He got all these hives. He got sick as shit. Um, looking like he caught some serious, some serious, serious there. Kanye posts some new photos of his wife, and she's got some great tits on her. You can definitely tell they're real, real saggers there. Fucking sandbags. Those are some fat mommy milkers, aren't they? Mm -hmm. What if Mariah was like, I want to get fake tits? Um... She said I wanted to get fake tit tits. I'd probably pull up the the uh the shit that can happen. 
I mean, people, I don't know if a lot of people talk about it, but like those bag breaks open and infects your whole body. There's a lot of problems that come with getting fake tits. I think it's super, super unhealthy. So I'd probably show her some of those articles um, and people talking about how unhealthy fake tits are for your body. I was uh, with the chick last night who had fake tits. What were your thoughts on those? They looked phenomenal. How'd they feel? They felt pretty good. Um, but they look better like in clothes. And then, you know, when you take the clothes off. They have like stitches and shit, huh? So, some. No, the, she like, said she paid like 8K. That's the thing. You get you get a more expensive <laughs> one. They can hide that stitch good. Yeah, like no, the scars though? Doesn't it scar your shit? Uh, I didn't see any scars. Really? <laughs> you suck on that scar? <laughs> <laughs> I sucked on that scar. Uh-huh. Yeah, the fake tits, it's like, I don't know. They're, they're, they do look good in clothes, but then you, you, you start start feeling with them. and They feel like little rocks or what? You can uppercut them. soft. They felt good. Really? Mm-hmm. Some fake tits are like that. Some, I mean, you get some they're nice fake surgeon. tits. They look like just real naturals. Then some of you have those fake tits that there's a good foot between each tit. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> it looks weird. Mm-hmm. So it's good there. <laughs> That's good. Uh, what else we got here? The Texas trip was good. Texas trip was pretty cool. We landed and Tony got us like this um, Cadillac Escalade that was like pimped out in the back. It had like four seats facing each other. It was just a sweet little thing. Right when we landed, Cruiser Hotel changed, got in that rig, went to the Kill Tony show, and it was crazy. The show was in an arena. And it's like most shows you go to like that, they're like super... There's like a director back there telling you where to go, when to go. And this was just kind of, it seemed like just a fucking free for all All the comedians were back there just having a hell of a time. Shane Gillis, William Montgomery, Hans are just standing around. And then the show started and it was packed. And then he had some cool uh, guests come up. Mr. Beast was there. We got to talk to Mr. Beast and he just seemed super nice kid. He seemed super stressed though. He just seemed like they just landed there just for the Kill Tony thing to do that. And he just, he's like, yeah, I just want to let loose a little bit. I just, we're only young once. He's like, I don't mind. I want to just kind of party and let loose. But he said they're filming 25 days of the month, and you could just see the stress in his eyes. Um, but he was a nice kid. And would I you, guess. Would you want to be that successful and stressed? Fuck no, bro. It's not even worth it, huh? No, I'd rather, yeah. I don't think so. But someone like that who's just so obsessed with it, and he says he wants to do his, his, um, his little crew were saying he's a fan too, and he wants to do some avids. Uh, so that'd be pretty cool. That'd be crazy. It was pretty crazy. Would you ask him about thumbnails and shit, or what? <laughs> <laughs> Give me some ideas for some titles, brother. <laughs> That'd be fine if you did. We were just ask, asking him kind of when he got here and what's. Yeah, just shooting the shit about how much he likes Kill Tony and how much the YouTube is just like censoring stuff and how he can't believe that Kill Tony's even able to go because they say the fag word all the time they say r-e-t-a-r-d word all the time they they get raunchy on there and youtube doesn't block it which is weird i'm surprised it shows up on anyone's search feed um but I yeah because they go crazy a, there's like, bullying on there there's if it's monetized yeah that's what i was thinking no i bet you it's well they not. probably get so much money from sponsors like oh yeah the show itself and the tickets that it they don't care about making money off YouTube. Oh, for sure. There was a little green room. We got there. We ate a little uh, little brisket and a salad. And then after the show, Tony had two like tour buses. And it they had like a police escort the tour buses to his his uh, condo in Austin, which is crazy. I don't even know what do you what do you call the cop station and say you want a police escort? I wonder how those police escorts get set up. Maybe it's through the arena, like but security or whatever. Literally, it's cops stopping traffic on the highways and stuff so those two tour buses can get through it's kind of cool yeah it makes you Who feel was that one kid that was getting a lap dance i was hanging out with you guys that's one of the new comedians i forgot his name but he's like 21 year old kid but he looks like he's at like 10 years old i know it was weird <laughs> and he's just fucked up on the bus just like <laughs> looking around i'm like god that kid does not look super happy but i guess he got <laughs> his first taste of puss a couple days ago he was a virgin and finally got it um and it looked like he was risen up a girl at, at at Tony's house too. This redheaded girl who does Tony have a fat crib or what? It's this it's this uh, condo. I don't even. I think it, I think you call it a penthouse, more of a penthouse. 
but it's just windows all around. It just looks over the, the downtown city of Austin, Texas. It's like this modern, it's it's pimp. It's If you can think of the pimpest Is it kind of like Steve's think. in Miami? Remember it was like that? Kind no, of? no. Steve's, that was a lot smaller. Do you remember the penthouse that we were in? Tempe? West 6th. That's, yeah, Tempe. It was more similar to that, but even, yeah, it was similar to that, actually. Fire. Just fucking sweet. And God, I guess I he, dream about that penthouse. <laughs> remember that night? Oh, nightmares hell. about that night. Oh, yeah, you had a bad night. Remember? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's, 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 uh, let's go back. <laughs> 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 we are talking about a little bit, huh? Yeah. They had some, they had girls wanting to just. So, uh, yeah, it was for your birthday. Um, fucking like West Six ago? penthouse. Me, you, Trev, uh, Sean, and Jay. Fucking go to this Molly party, top floor of the West Six penthouse. Like we literally took that elevator up into the living room. Mm-hmm. It pops open. We get there early, take a couple shots, and then uh, the the girls start flowing in. How many girls total do you think were there? Um. Probably 20, 20 or 30. What? Was there more? <laughs> you must have been fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, there was two. There was a lot. Bro, there was like 80. And you guys ended up running into a few gals, nice gals. <laughs> and they wanted you to put the pounding on them. Mm-hmm. But Jay couldn't get that little get pecker. Up. Little pecker going. <sighs> Came in, sprinted in mine, just like, Tim, where's the blue shoe? <laughs> I'm like, here you go, brother. <laughs> Took the blue chew and that wouldn't even work. <laughs> Fuck. Did I you jack too many times that day? I was nervous. I think I was like a, a little bit of nerves and it, I was on everything you could yep. think of, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. drug you could think of. Too many. Too many and too. Uh, stroke out that night. Let's just yep. say that. It's all right. You bounce back. And then uh, Shane Gillis, he was a cool motherfucker. I mean, <laughs> I don't even want to say what the hell happened there, but Tell I'll us. tell you guys after that. It was fucking funny. Um, and then the food, we had some good food in Austin. There's every single corner of Austin, there's some bomb ass, just restaurant quality little joint. It's pretty sweet. Um, next day, she, I, I left the penthouse kind of early. My foot was starting to hurt. I mean, I was risen. I was risen. No fucking problem. Struck out. I mean, we all struck out again. No problem there, though. And uh, Sean and Sono stayed for a while. They, they stumbled in about blacked out about 4 a.m., um, Sono laid down. He was sleeping on the concrete floor, snoring like a fat cow, and I was bouncing pillows off his head. He wasn't <laughs> even fucking shit. moving <laughs> all night. And I was trying to suffocate with a pillow, and then he would just like wake up, say some random shit. I actually did a little Patreon vlog. There's a vlog. I think it's a 15 minute vlog of the whole trip on Patreon, and I'm probably gonna keep it on Patreon. So if you want to check it out, it has our whole trip. Then we went to the stem cells place, um, Ways to Well. And they took care of us good. They hooked us up to some nice IVs, the stem cells. They went right between my Achilles and the bone in my heel. And the needle was pretty fat, but I don't know. She hit it in the right spot where it didn't hurt too bad, but this motherfucker's been hurting serious these past couple days. I don't know if the stem cells are just working or what's going on, um, but I'm excited for that. I got a fat dose of stem cells, and now I got another type of peptide. So I'm on three different peptides now. Christ. And I can't really notice like anything crazy. I mean, my sleep's been really good. Um, I've had really good energy, but nothing crazy yet. We'll see here in a few weeks. Uh, we'll get back to you there. So that trip went good. We were supposed to stay till Tuesday too, but after that, we got stem cells. We're like, fuck this. Let's just switch our flights and, and get home. It's hard. You, you think these trips are going to be so great and fun, but it's like when your home routine, your home bed, everything's just so nice home. You don't even want to go on these fucking trips. So I'm stressing a little bit. I'm doing a, Drakar and I are going to Columbia for a seven day MMA retreat. And we're going to be teaching these guys an hour in the morning, an hour at night, but it'll be at this luxurious retreat, a private chef. It's going to be a pretty cool little thing. Um, but already I'm stressing about the fucking travel. I'm like, God, how long is that flight? I don't know. I haven't even looked. I haven't even looked. And then two months after that, going to italy for another one so i don't know how long that flight is either i'm like just traveling huh yeah yeah so we'll see here (laughs) um this book i've been reading it's called five types of people who can ruin your life 
identifying and dealing with narcissists, sociopaths, and other high conflict personalities. This is a good ass book. And it makes you realize like, damn, there's a lot of habits and things that people do that's like, wow. And it makes you be able to notice this person's probably a high conflict person. What are the top three? Well, these are the chapters. Why you need to know this knowledge now. Warning signs. Warning signs of the 90% rule. Don't become a target of blame. Um, okay, these are some of the types here. The I'm superior, you're nothing type. Me. The, the, <laughs> the love Same. you, hate you type. The, Me. The cruel con <laughs> artist. Me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> the highly suspicious type. Me. The highly Whoa. suspicious type. The dramatic accusatory type. <laughs> dealing with negative advocates who who may also attack you getting help from others okay the hcp theory so forth but i've been reading through this book and it's like holy shit i'll, I'll read a little bit here for us <laughs> this is the dramatic accus accusatory type this is the final high conflict personality we'll cover this we'll cover is histrionic personality disorder what's the definition of histrionic Okay, histrionic is over-theatrical, melodramatic in character or style, denoting a personality disorder marked by shallow, volatile emotions and attention-seeking behavior. Exaggerated, dramatic behavior designed to attract attention. So this kind of HCP is motivated by fear of, of being ignored, blah, blah, blah. Um, let me get to the good parts here. I should unlearn this a little better. Um, histrionic HCPs. High, should, high conflict people consider their targets of blame the reason they are helpless victims, which justifies them in continuing to be helpless and seek others to take care of them and their problems. They can be very per persuasive at getting others to help them. Histrionic personality disorder, the key character characteristics, I believe, lead many to be histrionic HCPs are drive to be the center of attention, Dramatic speech, generally lacking in detail, but with exaggerated emotions. Misjudgment of relationships, thinking pe people care about them more than they do. You can see how these characteristics may be very helpful for a child who feels neglected unless she causes drama with exaggerated emotions. You can also see the char characteristics may be helpful when someone needs to command the attention of a larger group. In a crisis, such person can quickly grab everyone's attention and focus it on solving the problems together. Um, but when these traits become dysfunctional pattern, they become so irritating that people pull away. In modern relationships, such behavior can be extremely self-defeating and the cause of loss of jobs, lost friendships, and lost marriages. Okay, let me go keep going here. Where the fuck was I looking at here? Let me find the good parts. <laughs> Just some potter to an audiobook. <laughs> no, literally, literally, literally. Uh, spotting histrionic HCPs are often fairly easy to spot if you know what to look for. They are very dramatic, are easily mistaken for people who are reacting emotionally to an extremely upsetting situation. But for histrionic HCPs, the drama is often chronic and a response to their own internal upsets rather than to a real or extreme external event. So find out what's triggering their dramatic response. If their emotions seem out of proportion to the situation, and this happens on a consistent basis, it's like something little, and they're just fucking freaking out like it's the end of the world, then you may be dealing with a histrionic person. If they're dramatically blaming someone else for the cause of their drama, then you may be dealing with a histrionic HCP. Avoiding histrionic HCPs, dealing with the histrionic HCPs, what the fuck? I thought I had more underline than that, but I guess not. The love you, hate you type. But then there's this like, there's these narcissistic type, spotting the narcissistic type, and then the terrorist leaders, um, the I'm superior, you're nothing type. It's it, it's interesting reading this because you'll be, you'll you'll see it in, in in people. You're like, holy shit, that's crazy. And they probably don't even know they're like that. I mean, obviously. Um, so that's an interesting book. I heard that from the Modern Wisdom podcast. Five types of people who can ruin your life. And then it gives you some good tips on how to deal with them and how to stay kind of away from them and how to stop it when you can clearly see they're trying to be high-conflict person.
people who's constantly, every time you talk to them, all they want to do is just gossip about other people or all they want to do is bitch about their life and how just like life's not fair and they'll never say it's because of their actions. They'll always blame it on other people. My life's not fair because of this and this person does this and this fucking blah, 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 blah. Like, shut the fuck up, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Five toxic habits that are killing the winner inside of you. This is Conquer Your Mindset Money here on tw- on Twitter. Prioritizing comfort. Comfort is the most dangerous drug that destroys your potential. While trying to leave your comfort zone, you'll feel insecure, feel self-doubt, blah, 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 blah. Some people do that. Some people like that comfortable life. Uh, in this book I was reading this morning, some people, you think everyone wants to grow and try to be successful and, and make themselves uncomfortable here and there, but some people don't. They just want to find comfort and they just want to cruise through their whole life like that. Um, Or maybe they don't know know better. Yeah. They've never like felt how you feel after a hard-ass workout. Yeah, yeah. Or I mean, a cold plunge. Kids too, raising kids. That was one of the questions from my newsletter this morning, raising kids and... It's like, how comfortable do you want to make these kids? Like, every time the kid's uncomfortable and doesn't want to do something, do you just cater to them and just say, okay, you don't have to do it, little Tommy. You don't like it. You don't have to do it. And just make that kid think every time something's tough, I can cry and complain, and then it, and then I don't have to do it. And then later in their life, they're acting that way. They expect life to just be easy when life's not fucking easy. Something tough happens, and they want mommy to come, but mommy's not there anymore. I think if you have a little daughter, that's more acceptable. I, I mean, I even think with the daughter, it's like, come on, you got to put her, you got to decide what problems you're going to fix for them and decide what problems you, hey, but like, no, it's all right. That's a little bit of toughness. And it's going to toughen you up a little bit. I'm but sure if you have hard, a little princess. Bro. Yeah. That's just looking at you and you, it's easier said than done, obviously, but it's like, fuck, you want to set them up to have some good tools later in life? Or do you just want to cater them now? So they just love you. Both. Yeah. Pointing fingers, blaming others is is much easier than putting in the work yourself. Instead, learn to realize your fault, take responsibility, focus on finding solutions. I think some people get in a bad, bad habit of that. As soon as something goes wrong, as soon as anything, they just look for someone to blame, someone to point the finger to. And you see those people and you can see the direction their life goes in. And it's usually never up. <sighs> Uh, number four, waiting for the perfect time. If you wait for the perfect time to take action, you'll be waiting forever. There is never a perfect time. Start a business, follow your dream, blah, blah, blah. Number five, focusing on the negatives. Focus on the negatives in life is a path of self-destruction. This habit is a never-ending circle. The more you, tr- you try to end this bad habit, the more you get sucked into it. The best way to counter it is to focus on the good things. That's easier said than done, too, especially if you have parents that are just fucking negative all the time. All, all your whole life growing up, every every time your dad comes home from work, he's bitching about something. He's bitching about something. He's oh, he's looking at the TV, bitching at the TV. It's like it's just engraves in you. Did you have pretty positive parents, Art? Um, no, not not when I was younger. Now they're a lot more positive, but yeah, they were fucking negative growing up. Super negative about just everything, like work. Uh, just, and, and it kind of got engraved in me, like from the moment I woke up when I was younger, my first thoughts were negative in my day. Mm-hmm. It's like for no reason we were good with money. I had food to eat. Like shouldn't, like I sh- shouldn't have complained about anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they're changing a lot. So I, I mean, I think the parents too, especially my dad too, he's like, listens to podcasts now and he listens to things that before back in that day the only thing they get to watch is the fucking news and how terrible the world is and everything just bad going on and that's the only thing they get to listen to for real and watch just brainwashed them um i mean even mariah's mom she's been staying with us a little bit because she's down here it's like barrel racing season so they uh they're racing their horses all the time but she's even was saying she's like i try to like learn from you guys i see how you guys react to all these bad things that happen like and i try to just mimic that i'm like well that's good just be you no know, trying to be an example okay christian whitley here on patreon any thoughts on nogi only training i've been doing bjj for two years and been to maybe three gi classes 
I think it's fine. I think it's fine, but I just think depending on what you want to do, if you're like, I want to be a no gi world champion, that's your f- main focus. It's like, then that's, that's all right. That's cool too. But also it's like, if you, I want to get just good at jujitsu, there's something about like, I, if I go to a new city and there's a gi only place, I can go in there and roll in the gi and be fine. Or there's a no gi place. Well, I can go and roll in the no gi just fine too. There's something that feels good about kind of being proficient in both. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Yeah. I think the gi's been fun as fuck lately. Just fucking around with the grips. Yeah. Bolos. I like both, yeah, equally. Yeah, being well rounded, being well rounded, being able to do both. I mean, but like I said, if you're wanting to be world class, you gotta you gotta kinda be all in at at one. Mm hmm. Like those B team guys. But look at like Marigali though. Oh, I know some He's of the guys. Well, even D. a lot of the guys that are winning these uh, no gi championships, they're usually up there high in the gi also yeah. at IBJJF. Um, Tim, brother, can you give us a little play by play on how to make the cup of Joe? I'm on the spectrum trying to figure this puppy out. Uh, it depends what machine you got. If if you're tight on cash and you're still wanting a good a good espresso. I still recommend getting a decent grinder and getting that arrow press. And then you can get a little tea kettle that has the the uh, temperature on it. So you can make it at the right temperature. You do this inverted method with the arrow press. And that can, you'll get a good, good espresso from that thing. I use that thing for years if you're tight on cash. If you're not super tight on cash, the one I got for my home machine is the Gagia Classic. And uh, that machine runs about four four hundred fifty bucks, I think, on Amazon. And then if you you probably need another grinder around three hundred bucks, you're around seven hundred bucks. But if you're going to get a latte that's ten bucks every single day, seventy days, you'll have that puppy paid off. And that Gogia Classic, you're gonna have to do some uh, a little bit of research on that. It seems very um, complicated at the beginning, but it's really not. It's really not. Then you get a little tamper, do your espresso. Uh, do some research for it. There's there's experts out there that millions of YouTube videos that can teach you better than I can. Um, I've been trying to find a new like dark chocolate for our our coffee shop to make the most phenomenal mochas. And I've been looking at this hue chocolate, but the hue chocolate's so expensive. I don't want to make the mocha so expensive, but I also want it quality. So I'm, I hit them up, see if I can get a little wholesale count. But that hue chocolate, some organic milk and an espresso. If you want maybe a little bit of that that uh, local honey, fuck, you're not going to beat that. You're just yeah. not. I like that Hue brand too, but uh, I saw some shit that they had a bunch of like lead and mercury. Oh, really? In their chocolate. Like the highest. So. Well, fuck them then. <laughs> 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 no, go through with it, brother. But, uh, bro, that AeroPress, I use that shit every morning. Have you been using you it still? Still? Every morning. What's that method is like the pour over coffee, right? That's the aeropress. Basically, I grind it up, pour it in, get my hot water, let it steep for, you know, a couple of minutes. I'm just running. Perfect cup. What have you been doing, Jay, for your, because uh, uh, you just moved into Sean's new place. Yeah, I moved into the new crib. I'm just still settling in low key. I'm just trying to figure out what I need. I just barely unpacked most of my shit last night. Um, you got a sweet little setup. You got to give us a little video tour. Yeah, I will once it's all finished and shit, but. I want to get the, it's called the Mocha Master, I think. Is that the one you sent me? Yeah, and it's supposed to be like the best and easiest way to make your coffee, like pour over. Like, does it perfect. How much a, how much a week do you think you spend on? Oh, I spent a lot. 100, get, 100 bucks a week. Probably not that much. Five, what's five times like seven, like at least 40, 35. 50 bucks a week mm-hmm. easily. So 50 times four, what is that? 200? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you got the extra time too, people, I mean, you got the extra time. There's so many good coffee machines out there. Yeah. I've been trying it's to research it. and then, because I know I'm going to have to start buying the beans. And then, like you said, a lot of people recommend a really good grinder. So, just been researching up a little bit before I buy one. Yeah, every coffee sh- person I talked to, they said the grinder is even more important than the machine uh-huh. just to get those grinds so consistent so there's not chunks. Um, there's a bunch of different things you can do to just improve your espresso. Um, Goku, how to try find your true passion? What do you guys think? 
Oh, uh, just think about what you would do if money didn't really matter. God, I know I've I've said that to people before, and they're like, I don't know. It's like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to tell you? Just sit there and look at a wall the rest of your life. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, that's the that's good advice. That mastery book talks a lot about that. Like, oh yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, I think people should read that if they're kind of just like confused. The mastery book by Robert Greene. Uh huh. Nice. Okay. The confidential pod is actually fire. When's another dropping? Confidential pod. We're doing two a month on Patreon only, and people seem to love that show. It's nice on Patreon. We can let loose. We can say whatever we want, and YouTube won't just take it down. So that'll be on Patreon every month, two times a week, and I'm going to have some random guests on there. It's always after our competition training, um, so I'll be able to have some cool guests on there, and we'll get deep. Also, Ethan says, can you eat too much fruit? Some people say it's too much sugar, but it's natural sugar, you know? What do you say, Art? Um, I think in fruit, there's like some enzymes that help you break down the sugar, so it's not like shitty sugar. I eat a fucking lot of fruit. I wonder if there's ever been someone that's just fucking obese from fruit. Probably not. I don't not. think so. Probably not, because I think... I think it's more is, like seed oils and packaged carbs and shit that make people fat. Is it fructose that's in tru- uh, fruit too? Fructose. Is that like in syrups and shit? The fructose or whatever? Um, what is fructose? Not sure. Let's pretend we know everything though. Let's oh, we do. <laughs> <laughs> what is fructose? Fructose or fruit sugar is a ketonic simple sugar found in many plants where it is often bonded to glucose to form dishard sucrose, okay? I know the high fructose corn syrup is like the worst because mm-hmm. they try and mimic like the fruit. I've been watching the Thousand Pound Sisters in um, <laughs> that fucking show, bro. It's crazy. The way though, it is crazy because I we stopped watching it like probably a season ago. Because I'm like, that. this is just sad. Tammy's funny. Her sister's so funny. But she's so fucking fat that guarantees she's going to die. And she's going to be sad. So I'm not going to watch anymore. But then she ended up getting her, her, her surgery to where she, I think it shrinks her stomach. And now she's getting skinny again. But it's super entertaining. And those girls, their humor is fucking funny. They roast each other so much. It's, it's uh, crazy how big people could get, huh? Like That's so crazy. Nuts to me. Oh, fuck it's so crazy and like her her husband on the show he's like 500 pounds and he's like Jeez. she left and he couldn't leave yet because he's got a trach in and you got to stay in the hospital since you have a trach and to get the trach out you got to lose some weight so you're available to do the surgery and she left and he just ate he gained 40 pounds just Jeez. emotional eating um Me. <laughs> they're like drug addicts with food yeah oh yeah gluttony oh my god That's insane, bro. Hypothetically speaking, if I drink an energy drink once a day, what's a good substitute for the energy drink? They got some good energy. I mean, some better energy drinks out there, like those yerba mate energy drinks. The teas, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of those. um, Sprouts has a bunch of good different energy drinks. Mm -hmm. You you guys ever hit hit the energy drinks? I haven't. I haven't in a minute. I'll do like a Celsius or a coffee. It's usually my go-to. Or tea. Just do coffee. I remember we used to hit those bangs. Oh, those were crazy. Bangs Before training, get fucking bangs? geeked. Remember See, that? if I if I'm about to do some training, I don't mind slurping a little energy drink. Right now, I'm like, fuck, I can't do shit. Fucking pathetic. <laughs> you can't but, even lift. No, they said uh, 72 hours. Don't do anything because those stem cells will attack whatever's sore. So literally, just don't do anything and let those stem cells just settle into that Achilles area. How many times have you jaded? I've been jaying uh, <laughs> three times a day or what? I'm trying not to. I'm trying to fucking tighten it up a bit, but it's like, good God, when you're just fucking roaring always. <laughs> roaring? <laughs> you see Xavier moved out of Jeffries? Yep. 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 I told Zay pop in today and he, uh, let's see what he said here. Moved out of Jeffries. I guess Jeffrey had some shit going on. Yelling in the, yelling in the, in in the kitchen saying i didn't molest my grandchildren whoa (laughs) yeah i'm like jesus christ and then fucking uh xavier heard that and dipped out so that's good 
Okay, here we go. More info on availability on the for BPC-157. If not from Ways of Well, where else could I get it from? I think most doctors can prescribe the peptides. I was asking the doctor at the Ways to Well, and she's like, yep, yeah, just text me and I'll prescribe it to you. But I think most doctors can prescribe them. So maybe ask your doctor that you're interested in those and that you want to do them. Maybe that'll work. De Niro says, when will Timbo do some more international travel? I understand your household is like the heaven house, Paul Check, but what, what would you say to international travel? Well, we got some international travel coming up. Jacob Barger, do you have an air fryer? Just got one for Christmas. It's really changed the game, cooking good. Shit, that's still healthy. We do have an air fryer. They came out with these new air fryers that are glass, too, so they're not plastic and they're not sprayed with all this shit. Right now, we I use my air fryer probably once, twice a week. But Art, I wanted to give you my Weber grill because it's a nice-ass Weber grill, damn near brand spanking new, but you can't have it at your joint. Oh, I'm pissed. I would have put that thing to good use. What's the benefits of having your own apartment right now compared to living here at the apartment? Benefits, I'd say... Uh kitchen yeah kitchen just like uh having it separate um from work and you know yeah um tim how has everything <laughs> changed since the achilles injury morning routine diet uh it's just i have a little bit of free time i've been trying to stream more on twitch playing cod once a day uh the hardest thing though is just not fucking snacking out but i got these grass-fed fucking grass finished beef sticks that I can munch on. But ju I've been trying to stick with just, if you follow me on Snapchat, you can see my dinners. I've been just trying to do a bunch of protein, whether it's a bunch of chicken, a bunch of steak, a little cottage cheese, a little bit of this uh, like kimchi type stuff, um, and then a bunch of fruit. No it, carbs? So it's been like a platter of it. You've been on your carnivore MD shit? Well, I think, well, I think I've been doing a little bit of veggies. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been doing a little bit of like an avocado, pretty much though, pretty much just trying to do the lot of high protein. And I've been doing the high protein and it just seems like when I do it, my body is like, yes, just keep doing this. And it mm -hmm. seems pretty satisfying when you eat all that protein with the fruit. And every time I get snacky, I go just try to find either I'll whip up a little bit of milk and protein or I'll just grab some meat from the fridge. And I've been trying to stick with that. I feel like it's been doing good because I tell you what, if I fucking eat bread i get fatter and fuck quick yeah i've been eating like that too like fucking meat fruit the raw dairy uh a little bit of edge juices i feel the best like my brain feels like it works the best you do any carbs yeah i'll do a little bit of rice and shit kind of around training that's the thing i mean i would be doing i think if, if you do a little bit of oatmeal i mean a little bit of rice Maybe a good sourdough once in a while. I think that's beneficial for training. I don't think you should for be. Sure. I don't think you mm -hmm. should be eating like that. Without, I mean, doing explosive things, trying to recover for the next session, without doing some sort of carbs that are going to restore your muscles. Yeah, I think like seventy percent of the time eat like that. But Truman Lynch here, who lasts the longest in the Hunger Games scenario out of you, Shug, and the Jobins? How long before you cook? How long before you boys cook up Schmidt and eat him? Who lasts the longest out of the Hunger Games scenario? Did you watch those? Watch those, Jay? I don't think I did, no. Those are good. Are you should they? watch those. Type shit I like or was he? I don't know. I think I think so. The Hunger Games was good. Did you watch that, Art? I think I watched the first one. It's pretty good. I liked it, but who lasts longest? What about Probably who lasts me. longest in the Squid Games? Probably that one's a game just of fucking luck. I mean, anyone could win that one. I could win that one. Hunger Games <laughs> is about survival and tactics, I think. I think I'd take that one. <laughs> I'd take Squeeze. Because how much camping have you done? <laughs> I've fucking <laughs> camped. Oh, buddy. <laughs> I have camped. I would find you and I'd <laughs> stick an arrow right in your back. No chance. <laughs> no oh, chance. Man. A burns, good methods for recovery from a little sickness and colds. I mean, every time I feel that shit, I just fucking get hydrated. Hydration, sleep, man. So that's it. Um, but, 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 but being in fight camp, being ill in fight camp, how to work around it. I mean, you fucking rest. Sometimes you need it. 
Um, everyone been sick as fuck lately. Tips on the recovering. Psh, everyone has been sick, dude. Same shit. Eat good food. Eat fucking real food. Hydrate and rest. It's crazy. I know. If you had to build jujitsu guys' standing skills from the ground up, what skills would you emphasize the most? How to properly sprawl. How to properly sprawl. So every time someone touches your legs, you don't just flop to your back. And after you know how to sprawl, then you can learn some snap downs maybe. Maybe learn to fake some shots and get some people in the front headlock. Get some people in the front headlock. You can get their knees to the mat, attack their heads, attack their necks, spin to the back. Um, yeah, we got that. Uh, and then... I teach him some, maybe a couple upper body takedowns, simple upper body takedowns, and then maybe a couple simple, simple single leg entrances. That's how I do it. Sam Wall, being injured in fight camp, and if you should keep on risking the injury to get worse, uh, I mean, you got to do your best. Get on that fucking airdyne. Get someone to hold pads for you. Do airdyne. Do pads, and do the best you can at working around it, keeping your heart in shape. Zark, you have to have sex with two chicks, but their ages have to add up to 30. Which ages do you pick? <laughs> <laughs> Skip that. Oh, shit. Zarky, you dark motherfucker. I know Tim's ages. <laughs> <laughs> 18 to 18, that's the only time I'm going. <laughs> yeah, right. Two 15-year-olds, Tim? Jesus. <laughs> Zave, right. what are you doing? Zave here. Come in, throw off your hoodie. Throw off your beanie. <laughs> hey, you heard girls back quick. That shit's already grown back. Um, okay, we got Xavier, one of the new found superstars of the podcast. <laughs> and uh yeah, real quick here we'll give Zave the mic and we'll talk about his little little session he had with Jeffrey. He ended up hitting the road because Jeffrey tried to finger him. <laughs> no, just jokes. Uh but Jeffrey molested his grandchildren. <laughs> That's what not the funny. Fuck. You think yeah. that's funny? Yeah, I need to. No, but for real. You think that's funny? That ain't funny. No, it's not funny, man. So why you laugh at that? I'm not trying to. And. It's only funny because. It's no, to no, talk into the mic. Talk into the blue. Jeffrey's crazy, man. So you're in your room having a little jack or doing whatever the fuck you do in there. And it's then choking. you hear Jeff screaming in the kitchen. Yes, man. He's in the kitchen screaming like. I didn't molest my grandchildren. I didn't molest my grandchildren. Jesus and, Christ. Um, so someone, so, I mean, you look at Jeff. I mean, Jeff seems like, a, I mean, he seems like a nice guy, but he's got a wonky eye, which <laughs> is nothing wrong with that. But he's definitely a homosexual. That's definitely. fucking weird as fuck. And that's good you left. So you ended up telling Jeff, I'm going to take off for a little bit. Yeah. And then what do he say? Let me yeah. have one more little kiss. <laughs> <laughs> He definitely seemed like there was just this weird vibe whenever I told him I was leaving. But um, which yeah, like apparently, um, he he bought a whole bunch of presents for his grandkids, and he like wrapped them all up and stuff. And he was like trying to get uh their parents to let them come see him, and like they okay. wouldn't they wouldn't let their grandkids come over. And then ne next thing like next thing you know, he's just in there screaming about that shit. Is that what he said? Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, and, that's not good. That's not a good little sitch there. Yeah, no, and I could just tell, like, just by the way he was saying this shit. Like, I just got this weird feeling about him. Ugh. Like, he was ready to rape again? Like, he was just, I don't know, man. When he's licking his chops, looking <laughs> at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was definitely something weird going on there. Oof. You lucked out. Yeah. That dildo could have been in you in no time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean um, Other than that Xavier was messaging me Every day Because he wanted to clear up some stuff About the last pod So let's clear it up Alright <clears throat> So Where do I start What do I want to start with When were you born I was born <laughs> December 6, 2003 No, clear no, up the shit you wanted to clear no, up Because Xavier, he said he wanted me to take out some stuff of the pie. Right, I said, so, no problem, I'll take that out He said, no, just take it down And so, I think it, he didn't want girls to see his haircut Nah, I, look, I looked good with that haircut what you mean? Oh, nah. except you went home and fucking cried and cut it <laughs> off So you did not <laughs> No, but um, the main thing was that I didn't 
I didn't just leave my kids. I didn't just leave my kids. Um, me and like me and my girl went through some shit. I let them stay with her for a little bit, and then she got them taken away from her. And now they're staying with her um her sister, and her sister's boyfriend. And do you talk to those the sister or the sister's boyfriend at all? No, I I can't get into contact with them right now because they're just they hate you. Yeah, everybody everybody hates me for there. for for letting Kyra move in with me and like letting her run away from her family and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, so yeah, back to the kids. Um, I'm not allowed to be around my kids right now because of a situation that happened between me and Kyra's new boyfriend while they were at the house. You guys came to blows. Type shit. <laughs> Type shit. Type shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> It so is. can we talk about that or is that legally not allowed? I think we can talk about it. I, I want to hear like the situation, like how it went down. Did you fucking how did break you? in the door? Yes. Okay, like. so I had a key because it was my apartment. It was literally my apartment. Like I was paying for the apartment every month. Like even like even after I left, I was still well, there wasn't a rent due yet. But um anyways, so yeah, I had a key, went in and um i didn't like knock or anything so they didn't know i was coming in i just unlocked the door walked in here turn that mic a little bit so just talking into the blue light yep and then so when i walked in he he got up he got up all like like all like what the fuck are you doing like uh -huh. like i was breaking in or some shit and did you have fists cocked no like, I, I, no at that point i was just like i was like what, i was like what are you talking about this is my apartment and i'm walking up to him he's like what the fuck fuck no and then i just sock him in his face left hook something like yeah <laughs> the left hook yeah like, nice little Alex Pierre hook. And then um <laughs> I'm sure it was Alex Pierre. <laughs> okay, keep going. Anyways, I dazed him. He like started stumbling. I hit him a few more times and I like I knocked him out. I jumped on him and like What up, Shane? Just, Shane? just <laughs> <laughs> and then I kept punching his ass until like Do you have his number? What do you mean? His, his, his phone, phone number? number. <laughs> nah, I don't know. I don't know him. I yeah. she's 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 probably not with, with him anymore. I don't think. So you hit him and you knocked him just, out or you just wobbled him. And after the little scramble, you ended up on top? Yeah, man. I, f I fucked him up. And then fucking she called the cops. The cops came. I got in, got put in handcuffs, got detained. Uh-huh. And, yeah. And then she got a restraining order. Yep. From you. Yep. And the kids. Yep. And when does that end? It ends halfway through this year. Well... So you ought to pay her a little visit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, as, as long as those fucking kids are taken care of. Because you made the choice to bust your little nut inside her and make those kids. Remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. And it's Very not their thing. fault. So no, hopefully no, they're taking care of like, um, What I'm doing right now here, bettering myself, is for those kids. It's for, yeah. Yeah. Like, this is the best thing that I could possibly be doing. Like, if I was back in Oklahoma, I still wouldn't be allowed to see the kids. I wouldn't be training here. I wouldn't have met any of y'all. Or Jeffrey. Or Jeffrey. <laughs> I would have just, I, like, I would have just been doing the same thing I'm doing here, working a job, but not but not have any of this. Mm -hmm. so. so your goal right now is to get good, whatever, make some money for them kids, and you're going to spoil yep. them. And better myself become the best possible father that I can be. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm moving with it. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Have you been horned up a normal amount since surgery? I've been horned up a little bit more just because I have a lot more energy. Um. Uh, yeah, that's about it there. Are tuggies at the massage parlor better, more efficient than tuggies from your standard hoe? <laughs> um, those ones at the parlor are professionals. They are professionals at giving hand jobs. So, okay, here we go. Does Xavier still live with Jeffrey? We covered that. They ended their relationship. The fucking psychopath. <laughs> Have you researched about eating raw meat for your recovery? I'm a little scared of raw meat. My buddy Art here had a little episode. Yeah. Well, the raw liver fucking about killed me. Oh, my God. I bet that Full was... week of that shit. I bet that so, was brutal. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. For sure. Yeah. Fucking puking, Yeah, maybe shitting. fucking Jeffrey. Yeah. 
Um, when you wake up, how long do you try to go without picking up your phone, or is it straight to surfing in the morning? Usually, I go straight to my PEMF and red light machine, and then pick up my phone and turn on a little meditation action. I've been going straight to Instagram. Have you? <laughs> I know Jay, you pick that shit up and go straight to tic- <laughs> TikTok for thirty men. <laughs> Mr. West says, I'm 20 and have a metal plate in my hand and a broken collarbone from a while back, but all healed fine. I've asked about your opinion on if you think I could still try MMA. You suggested give it a try, and I'm now starting to take your advice and travel the MMA world. My one question would be, what do you recommend for someone who doesn't have the finances for stem cells or proper recovery? Also, I'm curious to know you and Sean's honest opinion on Hans versus, Hans versus Diaz on Kill Tony. I mean, if it were based on that set alone... Diaz beat him. I mean, he had a bunch of funny, funny ones, but it's like the crowd fucking erupted with Han. Hans Kim could have bombed that night, and he's still gonna win, based on the crowd. Kyle Shafir, how do you run your competition jujitsu classes? I'm starting to coach a weekly competition class at my gym. Sometimes, sometimes you can do some um, specific, p- specific positions and have some minute goes in those positions, but most of the time, it's like set that fucking clock. Six, seven minute, eight minute, nine minute rounds, two minute break, and just have the rounds. And when you, when you're talking to the people, go in there, and it's not a time to flow at all, and it's not a time to flow. It's a time to go in there and try to win every single match you're in. Competition training. Okay, what do we have for time, Jesus? Fifty six. So, I think that's perfect. Xavier, is there anything else you want to clear up here? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't even remember right now. Okay. Well, don't be texting me after this shit. Take it down because. Are you, are you going to take it down? What? The last one? <laughs> yeah. Well, what did you tell me two days ago? I'm good. You don't need to take it down, brother. Well, it's like you have mixed emotions. Like one day you don't give a flying fuck. And the next day it's like bothering you. And then. And then you realize it's just going to be a pattern. So like you just want to handle it, you know. I feel like if it just got taken down. What what was like the main thing that bothered you? In His it? haircut. Oh. No, it was really just the whole situation with my kids and my baby mama. We cleared it up. Yeah. I know, but still. Like, She's definitely all clear now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Gosh. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button and comment what you think below. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Patreon.com slash Red Hook Academy. And then Snapchat, Tim Welch MT. We'll see you guys next week. Love it. Bye-bye. I eat ass. Save. Eat Jeff's ass. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs>